Now, will you notice we begin to move out in another area. My son, if sinners entice thee, consent thou not. Now you move out of the home. And who is the first fellow that you meet? Well, it's generally a sinner because most of the human race are sinners. That is, they've not come to Christ. And all of us are sinners. But you'll meet the sinner who's really living in sin. Now, what's to be your attitude toward it? But by the way, you remember I said that in the book of Proverbs that you'll find a proverb for every character in the Bible. And you'll find, I think, a proverb for every friend of yours. And you might be well not to tell your friend what it is. Now, here's a proverb that refers to someone in the Scripture. Who do you think this applies to? My son, if sinners entice thee, consent thou not. Doesn't this apply to Joseph when he was taken as a slave down into the land of Egypt? And Potiphar's wife attempted to entice him. Well, here is one that is an example of this, and he did not consent. Now, the little fellow brought up in the home, he's a young man, he moves out into life. Now, what is he going to do? Well, this is his problem. If sinners entice thee, consent thou not. What will happen? Well, here's what will happen. If they say, come with us, Let us lay wait for blood. Let us lurk privily for the innocent without cause. Let us swallow them up alive as the grave and whole as those that go down into the pit. We shall find all precious substance. We shall fill our houses with spoil. Here he meets the sinner who has a plan and program to get something for nothing, to live off of somebody else and to make somebody suffer in order that he might prosper. Now the word is, cast in thy lot among us, is what they'll say. Let us all have one purse. That's an interesting thing, you see. That's the philosophy of the hour. Let's all of us live out of the same purse. And generally, those that are for that are for doing nothing themselves. They are for you and me sharing what we work for, and they haven't any contribution to make at all to it. This is a false philosophy of life, but it's a philosophy that's common among young people as they're coming along, unfortunately. This is the thinking and the mood of the present hour, something for nothing, and using all kinds of methods to get it even crooked methods and that sort of thing. I remember that when my dad was killed in a cotton gin accident, I was 14 years old, and my mother took my sister and me back to Nashville, her home, and I had to go to work. I couldn't continue in school because we had no finances at all. And I got a job at a wholesale hardware company And they sold practically everything, including candy. And I worked in the mailing department with several boys. And I want to tell you, they were mean fellas. They had figured out a way that you could go into a box of candy and take out just one piece, and you'd never be detected. But it's wholesale there, and you'd have about 50 boxes. Well, you could fill up several yourself. And you know that I must confess, I cooperated the first day. And then my conscience bothered me that night. And I said, that's not right. I'm stealing. And so I went back the next day and told them that I'd already eaten (laughs) several pieces. And I told them that I was not for that. After that, they would let me buy it wholesale, and I would buy six bars of candy in a box And I'd sell them a nickel a bar in the office there to the women that worked in the office and the men. And then I always kept the last one because I paid 25 cents for six bars. I sold them for a nickel apiece, so I got a bar. So that's the way I got my candy. I had to work for it, but I felt like that was the best way to do it. May I say to you that it's so easy to fall in with a group, especially a young man to fall in with those that are shady 
and doing shady things or working with a group that are goofing off, as they say, and are not returning a full day's work for a full day's wage. And it's so easy to cooperate in that type of a thing for the young man. Now, this is the first advice that's given to him.